One of the most surefire ways to get people riled up on the internet is to make fun of their favorite video games. And I'm going to do just that. You're gonna see some really great shooters on this list. You'll probably think I'm crazy, but the idea of labeling something is subjective. Just because I feel that these titles are overrated doesn't make it a fact. I simply feel that these titles seem better than they actually were because of nostalgia. These games aren't bad by any means. But are they deserving of the amount of praise, adoration, and unscrutinized worship that they receive? Well, no. They're simply good games. The problem is, media outlets were paid the big bucks to write glowing reviews of these games. Twelve-year-olds spend their summer break powering through them and grew up to wax nostalgic about the good old days, and we get so lazy that we stop forming our own opinions and simply agree that they were amazing. All of which gave the following five shooters an undeserving amount of attention. Attention that is often and incorrectly conflated with quality, quality that seems to improve over time. So yes, I'm going to seemingly hate on some of your favorite games. Because the truth is, these are the top 5 overrated shooters. Much like how WoW is widely, and wrongly regarded as the first big MMO, Halo also is the benchmark against which many other shooters are judged. Shooters that followed the sci-fi space marine in a suit of armor formula were criticized as either Halo clones or hailed as Halo killers depending on how good they were. Halo Combat Evolved was the killer app for the launch of the first Xbox, turning Master Chief into the mascot for Microsoft's new console. The first Halo is praised as one of the best games of all time. It helped the FPS genre transcend mouse-controlled computer platforms and put it into the hands of the masses. But if we're honest, it wasn't the first game to make shooters work on consoles. It may have done it a little bit better, but it seemed a lot better than it actually was because there was nothing to compare it to. Halo took common FPS traits and themes and tweaked them just ever so slightly, making subtle gameplay refinements. All of its gameplay features were giving something akin to founder status when, in reality, there were many others who did it first but couldn't be noticed behind this giant. The health system recharged on its own, players were limited to only carrying two weapons at a time, and there was a key focus on vehicular combat. None of these things were groundbreaking. And even with all those so-called revolutionary gameplay refinements, you still played the generic, cybernetically enhanced super soldier who was a one-man army. Some of the levels were mediocre, and the level design was pretty boring. This game was great compared to what existed at the time, which was nothing. The first Gears did a few things right, but mostly it was just that it came out at the perfect time, which was less than a year after the Xbox 360 was launched. Sure, the Wii was selling like hotcakes, but it simply couldn't handle a powerhouse like Gears of War. And despite the mantra of some gamers, graphics do matter. But the truth is, graphics were never this game's focus. It was never advertised as a beautiful game, but instead was marketed around its story. It was the fans who ran away with the idea of its spectacular graphics. The graphics and animations were good, considering it was for the 360, but if you compare it to future titles in the series, it seems like a generation old. Also, the world was very bland. It was a mix of gray and brown, and if all I wanted was realistic visuals, I'd skip the clunky controls and annoying camera angles and just go to the movies instead. In the end, you were the typical sci-fi combat badass stereotype who couldn't jump, under siege by a race of genocidal marauding bugs in the universe that used common sci-fi space themes without actually being in space, with conveniently placed ammo clips throughout your journey in a dull world. The sprint and cover mechanics were a little clunky, the camera angle could be annoying, and the levels were too straightforward. And that's just a single player. Multiplayer had a horrible netcode, giving unfair advantages, and the weapons were terribly balanced. Nash or anyone? To be fair, Gear Series was pretty awesome. Resident Evil 4 revitalized its franchise by redefining the genre that it defined with its earlier titles. Well, I guess that isn't true, since it took everything that made the previous games great and threw it away for a quick time events and a combat system that let you German suplex zombies. And yet people claim it to be one of the most revered action games of the last generation. Well, it certainly isn't a revered survival horror game. Perhaps you'll recall this from one of our previous top 5 lists. Over the past decade, the once mighty horror genre has fallen from gaming grace into the depths of niche obscurity. Genre cornerstones like Silent Hill and Resident Evil have become little more than action thrillers and platformers with an overabundance of rust. I guess modern gamers just don't enjoy a good scare as much as they enjoy this. But let's put all that aside. Even if you ignore the fact that it's a completely different game, even though it wasn't advertised that way, it's not a very good game. 
there were a number of alterations and changes to the franchise in RE4 that made it feel like a huge improvement to some, but it was a departure from everything that once made Resident Evil the horror cornerstone that it was. One of the best aspects of the first few Resident Evils were the puzzles and trying to find your way out of a massive area. They removed every ounce of backtracking. On top of that, the sound design was pretty bad, the story was a little silly, it got repetitive in spots, the dialogue was uncharacteristically goofy at times, the difficulty was inconsistent, there was a lack of ammo throughout the game, and there's something about the little glowing loot piles of gold that just bothers the crap out of me. What are you selling? What are you buying? The Grand Theft Auto franchise is credited with a lot of things, but most of all is its large sandbox worlds, destroying the use of children, and the great writing that makes up the missions and the universe around them. You can do just about anything you want until your heart's content. But mostly it's just stealing cars and shooting people. Some missions are agonizingly boring, and the game time always descends into seeing how many stars you can get before being arrested or killed. A game which becomes very boring very quickly as you aimlessly drive around running over people for money. The game mimics our worst instincts of modern pop culture. Hey, I'm bored. When you gonna drill me? Like our love for unadulterated violence and hedonistic images. And each sequel exists merely as a pissing contest with itself to see if it can get more ridiculous than the previous. The Grand Theft Auto series is unquestionably one of the most overrated video game franchises of all time. Sorry, Fido, we're gonna have to drown you. <laughs> If you made it this far in the video, you probably know it's coming. Yep, you guessed it. Call of Duty. What's most perplexing is how polarized the gaming community is on this topic. There's a strong group of gamers out there who champion the series as solid fun. Well, at least I think there are. How else would each game sell better than the last? But if they're saying anything positive, I can't hear them. Their words are being drowned out by the negativity of the COD haters, who rightfully complain that the series is the same thing year after year. Sure, the flavor of each game varies slightly, but when the only changes from game to game are the national allegiance of the enemies you're pumping full of lead and a few new guns and equipment, then the only incentive to buy the latest game is because everyone else is buying it and you'll have no one left to play the older one with. And I know, none of this is information or opinions that haven't been regurgitated a hundred times on a hundred different websites, and don't worry, I'm not judging you if you've bought a cod or two in your life, you're only human, we've all succumbed to peer pressure before, so I'm not here to judge, but I am here to tell you that Call of Duty is overrated, including COD 4. It seems to be that every time I hear about COD 4 in a YouTube video, it's about how great it was, and it's pretty much become taboo to talk bad about it. There's a theme to this video that I hope you picked up on. We all fall victim to herd mentality on the internet. We're influenced by our peers to adopt certain behaviors, follow trends, act in the same ways at the same times for a sense of conformity or a need for acceptance and the desire for a sense of belonging. Repeating opinions of others because we're too lazy to think for ourselves. Games like GoldenEye and Half-Life and all the games on this list are almost taboo to think about critically. People tend to look back on fond gaming experiences and only seem to remember the good. Developers take the success of their first big hit and try to copy over the stuff that worked. They create a formula for their future titles, thinking that without these things, it wouldn't be a sequel. But to us, the hardcore gamers and the fans of those franchises, it becomes a stale and repetitive experience. We start to resent the things that made the originals great, and then we think back to a time when we truly had fun in a game from one of those franchises. Titles like Halo, Gears, RE4, GTA 3, COD 4 are all raised onto a pedestal above other games because they captivated us, and they all started the series of games that we want to love. But most of it's just nostalgia in rose-colored glasses. Call of Duty 4 is just like any other game on this list. It did some great things for its series, and it spawned a community around itself. It kicked off one of the biggest selling video game series in the world, but in no way does it deserve all of this praise. It had repetitive missions and poor AI, the multiplayer had some broken aspects to it with Frag 3X and a helicopter that could build your streak in your next life, and you definitely can't forget Juggernaut or Martyrdom. And every Call of Duty since has limped forward promising improvements on the last. No last stands! only to be released as a major letdown to its diehard fans as the COD haters get louder and louder each year. It's gotten to the point where I can't even say that I enjoy Call of Duty without a troll informing me of my mother's extracurricular activities. 
but people still buy it, so Call of Duty is the most overrated shooter. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. You have thicker skin than most people on the internet. Perhaps I earned your like, and you're welcome to subscribe for more Top 5 fun. My name is Crazy Penguin, thanks for watching, and enjoy the game.